Welcome to Kamakura. This delightful seaside town is around an hour south of Tokyo and you can get here on a direct train, making it a perfect day trip from the capital city. Kamakura, much like Nara and Kyoto, was the capital of Japan from 1185 to 1333. So today there are lots of shrines and temples to visit in the town. The most popular place to visit in town is the Kosoku Inn Temple and it's really really famous because it's home to a giant Buddha statue which has become of such importance that it's become somewhat of a symbol of Kamakura. The big Buddha is known as Daibutsu and its construction dates all the way back to 1252 when it took around 10 years to build. Today it's a national treasure of Japan. We're currently visiting Kamakura at the end of April and this is a wonderful time to visit because not only do you get to see the end of the cherry blossoms but there's other flowers in bloom such as wisteria. For an extra 50 yen you can pay to visit the interior of the Big Buddha. Obviously there's not a great deal to see inside as it's just one large room, but it is very interesting to see how the different pieces were put together. It's thought that the Great Buddha was constructed out of 30 pieces of cast bronze and once you go inside you can see the lattice framework of how it was constructed. One of the most important things to note when planning a trip to Kamakura is that it's definitely an early destination. What I mean by this is that most of the temples close by between 4 and 4.30 p.m. and so you'll have to plan to visit them way earlier than this if you want to fit them all in. We definitely arrived at the right time because it's now getting way busier. So let's now go to a temple which is 10 minutes down the road, Hasadera. Casadera dates all the way back to the 8th century and is probably most famous for its wooden statue of cannon. It's also elevated a little above the rest of the town and so provides beautiful views onto the sea and also the town. Chiman Cannon Masatsu statue stands over nine meters in height, making it one of the tallest wooden statues of Cannon in Japan. It can be found within the main hall of the complex, which unfortunately you can't take any photos of, and so you have to come here yourself to see how amazing and beautiful it is. It's covered in gold leaf and is said to have been created from a camphor tree. It's one of two statues of this kind, from a camphor tree which drifted across the ocean to reach Kamakura. This brochure gives you an idea of what it looks like. It's definitely more magnificent in person. Close to the main hall, there's a small stand selling snacks, like these dumplings. This is called a Rinzo, and if you turn it, you can earn the same merit as if you read all the sutras, but you can only turn it on the 18th of each month.
Kamachi Dori is the main shopping street in town and this is where you can find a lot of restaurants as well as street food to take away. There are also souvenir shops but I do recommend going to those shops a little bit further out of town as they tend to be better quality and more unique items for sale. One of the cutest things you can try is a red bean cake. There's actually a lot of different flavors, including cheese and blueberry, but we got the red bean paste with cream cheese. Our final stop of the day is this wonderful Shinto shrine. It's actually completely free to visit and if you miss the opening of the other temples in the area, then this one is actually open until 9 p.m. The best time of the year to visit this shrine is during the cherry blossom season as there's a wonderful cherry blossom alley which leads up to the shrine. Unfortunately, it's over right now, but we can enjoy the rest of the beautiful flowers and the other cherry blossom spots in the area. The Mariyama Onari Shrine is found within the shrine complex and is one of the greatest hidden gems of the area. It's actually a set of Tori gates leading up a gravel incline and reminds me a lot of Fushimi Inari in Kyoto. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.